you talk in the book about the interactions between uh, the disease and the nature of uh, your work as a founder. You yeah. know, um, I mean, it, it is, uh, you know, as you know, um, mental illness, rates of mental illness are elevated yeah. uh, among, you know, entrepreneurs. Uh, I guess, you know, first question, like, how do you understand that relationship? What is, what do you think is going on there? Can I speak in unpolitically correct? <laughs> Got to be a little crazy I mean, why to start now? something, right? You need a little bit of crazy, and um, you know, the, I didn't put, make this joke in the book. I don't know if it's funny, but you know, the data that came out when I saw this University of California San Francisco study. I think this is kind of in the book, but it's um, you know one to three percent rate of bipolar, depending on who you talk to, which is a pretty wide range. But it comes back to my doctor describes that as one of the most underdiagnosed illnesses and one of the most overdiagnosed bipolar. And then in the entrepreneurial population, we think that's 11%. So it's somewhere between three to 10 times as high. ADHD is similar, uh, similar multiple. Depression is similar multiple. Substance use is similar. And then there's a bunch of stuff we haven't studied that I, I would, I'm, we will, we have to, right? Which is like uh, the autism spectrum, Asperger's. Um, suicide. You know, we know the data on two new books about Tony Shea that go, you know, deeper into that. We all probably know those stories. So there's just a clear over-indexing. And then you have narcissistic personality disorder where we know the data, which is 100% of entrepreneurs, <laughs> right? Because you have to have a unhealthily high level of narcissism, most likely to believe that you of all people are gonna go and do this thing that no one else has done before. And so it just kind of make it just kind of makes sense that this neurodiversity stuff over indexes in a way that if we can own that, then if you disclose, it should be like, oh, cool, like you've got a better shot at this, <laughs> right? Like I felt like disclosing bipolar would limit my ability to raise capital um, or limit my ability to hire people. When instead it might be like, oh, maybe he's got a shot. You know, he's got this thing. And whenever I share this, I also say, and it's important, you can be eminently free of a chronic mental health condition and build something amazing. So I don't wanna, let's not, let's not um, make it romantic or something or pretend that it's a necessary ingredient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, to, to the extent that you had sort of, you know, instrumental purposes in, in writing this book, you know, you, you could have taken the, the approach that, uh, you know, oh, you know, people who are going to fund companies should be aware that, uh, you know, having mental illness doesn't affect your ability to do the job at all. That's not the tack you took. Your, your tack is both that it, in some ways, made you much better at your job, yeah. and in some ways, put the company at risk in spectacular ways. Totally, yeah. I, I don't know if it's in the book, but like, I think all these different conditions can undergird greatness and seek to destroy it at the same time. That's kind of the deal, right? That's like Superman back to the superheroes. Like, you get this gift, but you have this, um, you know, potential that as you unwrap it, it, it's gonna explode or something like that. And then when it comes to, since we're in the halls of a, of a great investment firm where we back great entrepreneurs, there is chronic mental health conditions, and then there are acute mental health moments or crises, which everyone in our, every, all of us in our lives are gonna face an acute mental health crisis. And we could talk about like, they're the, like obvious ones, but things like grief, moving, even just a new job, new family, financial stress, at some point in your life, you're gonna face that. And for entrepreneurs, it's like happens a lot, <laughs> you know, even just financial stress about the business. So you can be free of a chronic mental health condition like the one that I have, and then walk into an entrepreneurial journey and experience that separately as an acute problem, either through your personal life or through the company, and the company is likely gonna provide more of those. And those are gonna make the job harder too. So I don't know if I did a great job of this, but my goal is to, to just like expand the aperture so it's not like an us and them. Those people over there with the chronic mental health condition who we need to think of in a certain way, and the us over here who don't have a chronic mental, th mental health condition. But to look at it and say, we all are gonna face something acute at some point, hopefully not chronic, and then for the conversation around founders, recognizing that the, the acute stuff is gonna happen more frequently or what you might describe for someone with a chronic condition like mine, there's gonna be more triggers. Yeah. Or the highs and lows of the entrepreneurial journey are gonna be amplified 
by the highs and lows of the mood disorder. More, more, more triggers and also more opportunities, more, more sort of feedback loops that encourage. I mean, you talked about, about uh, hypomania and how you would have these just spectacular bursts of yeah. you know, extended periods of being able to be incredibly effective at your job. Yeah. You know, you know I, that's right. That's right. And now it, some, I've got a new startup and some people say, like, why are you doing it? And it's like, I want to prove that I can do this while on medication. You know, like I want to, I don't want the narrative to be that bipolar was somehow requisite. I want to, I want to do it better. 